Welcome to section 4.6, proving triangles are, congru are congruent using ASA or AAS. Now I'm sure after the last couple sections, you might have pieced together that ASA stands for angle side angle, whereas AAS stands for angle angle side. Now what's different between these two different uh, methods of proving triangles are congruent isn't the pieces that we need because clearly both of these use two angles and a side. But what's different is the relationship or the direction in which these occur in order. For example, in these top two triangles, uh, we'll call them A, B, C, and D, E, F. Well, our side AC that's congruent to side DF is stuck between the two angles that are the same. So if we were to name this as what we should be trying to use, it would be first the angle, then the side between them, and then the other angle. And that lines up with our angle, the side between them, and the other angle. So from this, we could say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle D. E, F, by angle, side, angle. The order of the angle, then the side, then the other angle matters. Now the difference between angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side is that uh, for angle, angle, side, again, we'll call this A, B, C, and D, E, F. Uh, the order is different this time. Now between the two angles that we know are the same, there isn't a side that we know the measurement of. So between angle A and angle C is a side. We don't know the side length. But after that second angle comes our side. So that's why it's angle, angle, side. And that works as well for DEF. We have angle, then the other angle, and then the side. So you have to make sure they're coming in the correct order to determine whether you're using angle side angle or angle angle side. But again, we now have enough to say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. So that's the new piece that we're going to be working with in this section today. Uh, so now we have to do some decision making. We have three different sets of pairs of triangles and we need to decide can we prove any of them are congruent. If so, we need to say, how so? Well, on this far left one, we have an angle that's the same. We have a side that's the same. So hopefully we could use another angle or another side. Unfortunately, we don't know if there's any parallel lines here. Uh, we don't know anything more about congruent sides, but we do have some vertical angles. So if we were to name this in order, we have the angle with one arc, followed by the angle with two arcs, and then the side. Or the angle with one arc here, then the angle with two arcs, and then the side. So yes, we can prove it's congruent, and that would be using angle, angle, side. This next one, uh, we have all three angles are the same, but we don't know anything about the sides. Well, if you think back to all the different ways we know to figure out that things are congruent, we know there's side, side, side. We know there's side, angle, side. We know there's the hypotenuse leg. We know that there's the uh, angle, side, angle, and the angle, angle, side. We have nothing about angle, angle, angle. So we don't actually know enough in this case to say that it's congruent. Uh, and actually angle, 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 is not enough to ever prove that two triangles are congruent. Because you can have, say, an equilateral triangle and a much larger equilateral triangle. All three angles in both are 60 degrees. So clearly, just knowing the angle measurement isn't going to be enough. You always need to know at least one side length to go with it. With the exception that angle side side doesn't work uh, unless it's a hypotenuse leg scenario. So now if we go and look at our last triangle here on the right, we have an angle that's the same, a second angle that's the same, 
And between those angles, these two triangles share a side. They share the same length. Well, by using angle, side, angle, this is enough for us to know that these are congruent. So let's do one proof, and then I will cut you loose uh, to work on your homework for today using angle, angle, side, and angle, side, angle. So with this proof, uh, we are given that CE is perpendicular to BD. So we know that that's going to be perpendicular. Uh, and so I'm actually just going to start my proof. Uh, I almost always will go with two column proof just because it's a little shorter. We have CE is perpendicular to BD and that's given. We also know that our angle CAB is congruent to CAD. So this angle is congruent to this angle. Uh, so that's CAB congruent to CAD. And that's also given. Well, for our second step, uh, actually before our second step, I'm even going to just, now that I wrote down my given, let's go and see what we're trying to prove. Uh, so I'll change colors for that. We're trying to prove that ABE, so this triangle right here is congruent to ADE. So we're trying to prove that those triangles are congruent. Well, in order to prove those, uh, we have an angle. Uh, we know that CAB uh, is, oh, sorry, no, not CAB. We have that CED is perpendicular, so it's a 90 degree angle. We also know that CEB is also a 90 degree angle. So uh, we could say that uh, angle AED is congruent to angle AEB. That's by the definition of perpendicular, uh, of perpendicular lines, or just the definition of perpendicular. I'd be fine with that. Well, so now I've got an angle. That's helpful. Uh, I'm going to go and make that angle blue just so it's a little bit more obvious that we've got it. Uh, we can also see that AE is congruent to itself. Uh, so that gets us a side. So we can say a step three, AE is congruent to itself. And you know that's from the reflexive property. Well, so now I've got an angle, we've got a side. Uh, and the other piece we know is that this angle right here is going to be congruent to this angle right here. But what we don't know necessarily is how that relates to our triangles because those angles aren't in our triangles. But what we can do is we can say, hey, uh, we can say that CAB, uh, so that angle, angle CAB, and uh, we can also then say BAE, uh, angle BAE, uh, are supplementary. And the reasoning for that is they're a linear pair. Those two angles added together make up a straight line. So they're a linear pair. Well, we also know then that CAD and DAE are supplementary for the same reasons. CAD and D, A, E are, are supplementary also because they're a linear pair. So I'll just make that part of the same step because both of them are linear pairs. So what good does that do? Well, that now means uh, that we could say, uh, let's see. Well, what we can do then is we can use some substitution to replace our CAB with a CAD. So that means angle CAD and BAE 
are supplementary. And that's going to be using substitution or the transitive property. I know there's technically a difference, uh, but I'm not going to be too picky with that. So sub or trans. So substitution or transitive property, either one would work there. And now we can we have two different angles that are supplementary to the same angle. Way back in chapter two, uh, you had a theorem called the congruent supplements theorem, where if two angles are congruent to, or are supplementary to the same angle, those two angles have to be congruent. So now, since we know that these are both congruent or are both supplementary to CAD, we can then say that angle D uh, DAE is congruent to angle BAE, and that's going to be from the congruent supplements theorem. Well, now we have an angle. We have a side from back up here at three, and we have another angle from right here. That's enough for us to figure this out. So we have the, the angle the side in between, and then this angle here. So that's going to be using angle side angle. So ABE will be congruent to ADE. Uh, ABE congruent to ADE by angle side angle. And that's going to be the end. So uh, that's all I've got for you today. Good luck, and as always, let me know if you have any questions.